Welcome everyone to Global Government News. Today is Monday, May 28th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website right here, ggnonline.com. I have a poll up here, and there's five days left if you'd like to vote on it. What are the chances of a stage alien invasion space threat during the 2012 London Olympics? So far, the majority of people are saying that uh, it could happen, but who knows when, followed by a tie at 24 percent between never going to happen grab your tinfoil hat and a very good chance so you can follow ggn uh, by email there i have a news archive there and a uh, recent feature is uh, a language preference so also if you'd like to donate uh, you can do it right there all right i'm ready to go here this is going to be economic news in this first video uh, the headlines and links will be posted in youtube's video description so kind of something that we expected to happen which was Greece pours 22 billion euros or dollars into four biggest banks. So Greece handed 18 billion euros to its four biggest banks on Monday, an official said allowing the stricken lenders, the stricken lenders, ooh, those sound like they're in bad shape, like they got the raw end of the deal here, these lenders, to regain access to the European Central Bank funding. So according to this article, it was long awaited. It was a long awaited injection via bonds from the European Financial Stability Facility. See, <laughs> that this goes to imply that there's gonna be a constant crisis, right? If there isn't, if, as if there hasn't been one already. But uh, we have that here in the United States as well. These permanent uh, financial stability uh, committees and, and basically institutions, so. So the crazy thing is that they dubbed this a bailout as if the people in Greece were begging for this. The majority of people in Greece, right, that pay taxes, they were begging for this uh, for this money to come. Uh, come on, bail us out because that's if you give us this money, it's going to solve the problem. Well, everyone knows that it's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to make it worse. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a um, deceptive word. And, and then what? It says here that... Uh, to cover the they're, the reason they're doing this, they say, is to cover basic state payments if efforts to revive falling tax revenues fail. Falling tax revenues. That means people don't have money to pay the taxes anymore. I guess Greeks are supposedly notorious for not paying taxes, but uh, I guess if you don't have as much money, you're not going to, you don't have any money or a job, and you're going dumpster diving, you're probably going to end up not paying your taxes, right? It says here, families crumble in Greece's economic crisis says here that a 70-year-old cannot afford to go to the supermarket anymore, so for the past few months, he is starting rummaging uh, for food in dustbins, basically garbage. He goes out in Athens at night so that no one sees him. And it says when Sky News met him, he was collecting onions for some wheel bins, or wheelie bins. It says here, uh, since my pension was cut, I cannot buy food, so I look through the garbage. I can only pray that things get better. It says here that he is among an increasing number of pensioners who have slipped into desperate poverty and rely on uh, waste food to survive. So yeah, it goes on. Just life has not always been like this, but the debt, ooh, the debt crisis has left them unable to provide for themselves. So we all know um, who issues credit, which is which are basically banks, and that I think even um, the Goldman Sachs was actually involved in a big scheme over there uh, in Greece as well. So so it's here debt hit Greece, running out of medications. So I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing because it's less prescription eugenics but uh who knows maybe people still want their uh their insulin and stuff like that and it says pharmacies in greece were on strike earlier this week in protests at the government not paying them for medicines that should be free to their customers so it says here the pharmacies now have huge debts to pharmaceutical companies for drugs they have handed out for free of charge it says here the government owes us thirty thousand euros but we have not been paid by them for a year and a half so just like this story, families crumble, you know, this is economic warfare, and uh, this is social warfare, so it's, it's about killing families, but it's also about killing people. So it says here, soon people will start dying because of a lack of medication. Well, that's the point, because you're now a useless eater, right? You're eating out of dustbins because you can't provide for yourself or your family. So it says here, bank profits hit five-year high. Four years after crashing the global economy as a result of their irresponsible gambling with other people's money. I don't think that was a real reason. I think there was more to it. But U.S. banks posted record profits for the first quarter of 2012, according to a report released by the 
um, FDIC. The quarterly banking profile showed that net income for the first quarter of 2012 was $35 billion, up by $6 billion uh, from the first quarter of 2011, while total revenues increased for the only uh, for only the second time in the past five quarters. So the biggest thing was to consolidate. It was all about consolidation. So that was the biggest reason, I think, in creating these institutions and stuff like that, these permanent bailout um, institutions, which are basically good, for, really good for the bank. So it also destroys whatever disposable income that most middle class people had all around the world uh, to not have it anymore, which makes them less of a threat. So, you know, part of population reduction is to decrease the threat. Remember, I covered that before about with Plato using that quote to, uh, uh, you know, prevent a rebellion. So they got to keep the numbers down. It has nothing to do with uh, too many people, not enough food or climate change or stuff like that. It's just too many people are, you know, even if they are a bunch of zombies, they're still going to be eventually a threat if they, you know, all of a sudden decide to pull their heads out of their rears. And, you know, with a strong middle class, it makes it harder uh, for them to defend against that, the powers that be, that is. So as uh, all of this is going on, they have, you know, they don't, they don't have the, the money to pay for their taxes. Uh, they're dumpster diving. They're having money uh, forced on them, basically, these bailouts and stuff like that, which is going to decrease their currency and stuff. What? Uh, oh, and remember, in Greece, you have the economic suicides, people, you know, killing themselves and stuff like that. Kristen Lagarde, uh, I believe, what, from the IMF, says here, Greeks can help themselves out of the crisis by paying their tax. So just think about it, like a little expression, just think about it, think. See, you pay your taxes to the banks, and then, uh, you know, you take on all this debt from the banks because of the banks, then uh, it all works out for the banks, see? You gotta think, pay your tax. It says here, she has warned that Greece can expect little sympathy from the International Monetary Fund on its bailout terms and called for its citizens to help themselves. Oh, help yourselves by paying their tax. And of course they say, because it's a financial crisis, right? Always the crisis. Engineered crisis. It says here, Spain, five banks downgraded. Bankias seeks 19 billion euros in aid. So Spain's next. And it says it's not looking good for the Spanish banking system. S&P just slashed their credit ratings of five banks said the country is heading into double dip recession, which is probably just like the United States never really left a recession. <laughs> that growth really never expanded. Uh, it maybe temporarily uh, there was a little bump of people thinking that they that it was, so they went out and spent more. But uh, yeah, they never really got out of a recession. But they like to use that word a double dip recession, kind of like the financial crisis. So, you know, as this stuff happens, you're going to have this, right? I covered this before, and this is from the EUobserver.com. Radical left and neo-Nazis score well in Greek elections. So Greek uh, voters on Sunday, it says here, this was from May 6th, just so you know, said here that they uh, punished the two ruling parties responsible for the last EU bailout and its austerity measures by giving the radical left and second highest number of votes and allowing a neo-Nazi party into legislature for the first time. And this is uh, right around the same time EU austerity is feeding racism, report says. So I don't know if it's so much racism, but that's they like to throw that word around a lot. I use it sometimes because it just cuts down and, you know, for time's sake. But uh, it's basically people see all these immigrants that are flooding in and uh, there's too many people and not enough jobs and they keep letting them in. And then they then they get on to the um, to the social uh, benefit system. And they drain that, and then so you got these people that are born there, and they're just like, well, what the flip, you know? And but these politicians, they just keep doing it. They just keep doing it, right? Because a lot of them, they work for the IMF, right? They go and they work for these uh, central banks, you know, like Monty and all them. They're in Italy. They all just go back and forth. Holland. They all go to little Bilderberg meetings. So it's a big business. It's a big business, uh, scamming people out of their futures and their wealth and stuff like that. And. Uh, it says here that political polarization dangerous as psychologists. So this is a, a very, very, very dangerous article, and I'm not going to go through it all. I, you got to go through and read it yourself. But basically, see that that everything, all of the premises that this quote live science uh, writer uses, is all based off false premises. So, and the best example is, of course, it says you know liberalism and conservatism are resulting in two political parties that seem almost alien to one another. Now, if you've ever, if you're a libertarian or you're a progressive and you've, you've actually spoke with one or the other, you actually find that there's a decent amount of things that you can agree on, you know? You know, if you had Dennis Kucinich and Ron Paul, like, that's why I said, if you had actually had one of them as a president, one as a vice president or whatever, 
it would actually be a really good combination because they could come together on a lot of issues, you know? They could actually compromise on some things. But uh, they're talking about Republicans, which are neocon, kind of have that neocon thing going, and then uh, they're talking about Democrats, which kind of have this, quote, communist thing going on. But really, they're both uh, the same thing. They're both the same parties. But it's funny how they try to differentiate the two parties as if they're different. So this is what's going on in Europe. You know, he says this is troubling, right? This is a dangerous area because people tend to cluster around their morals in group, you know, uh, it says here, a uh, few outsiders with only suspicion, not understanding. So those people that are in Europe and the United States that see all these immigrants flooding in, they just don't understand, right? They don't understand. They just don't have any moral empathy, right? So it says here, Swiss prepare plans in case of Euro's demise. This is from the 27th of May. Switzerland is considering capital controls to uh, fight a sharp rise in the Swiss franc in the event of a Eurozone collapse. Remember I said the Olympics could be a possible stage for what? Uh, all that security and all that for the possibility of this Euro going down the tubes, right? So remember this, Switzerland is surrounded by, but not a member of the European Union. That's because this is the uh, elite's own little money laundering country. Um, where they also carry out heavy social engineering on the Swiss people are what? They're like the UK. The UK currency is a pound sterling. It has no declared plans to adopt the euro. So these are the Rothschilds. These are the families, their own little private countries like Switzerland and England. They're not in it, right? They're not in that. But yeah, they're uh, usually, Switzerland's usually, uh, their currency, the franc, is a safe haven currency, as they call it. Banks ready for breakup of eurozone policymakers and firms across Europe are making preparations to cope. They break up of the single currency. It says the Bank of England governor said uh, this month that it is too busy preparing contingency plans to cope with a potential major economic shock to the UK economy emanating from the Eurozone. The European Commission also said last week that it has asked member states to make plans to deal with a potential Greek exit. And then we have this, this uh, Lloyds of London preparing for Euro collapse. So the chief executive of the uh, multi-billion pound Lloyds of London has publicly admitted that the world's leading insurance market is prepared for a collapse in the single currency and has reduced its exposure as much as possible to I mean, have UK plans border controls for euro meltdown the government is making plans to cope with a potential increase in immigration should the euro uh, currency collapse the home secretary has revealed even though just like the IMF they do not expect it to happen so Anarchist group vows to wage low-level warfare on Olympics. So I wonder, Olympics and all this security and the, quote, anarchists in Italy, and now they have, I think, troops or something on the ground. So it's not just the threat of uh, terrorism, uh, of anarchists in Italy, and now it's the threat of anarchist terrorism at the Olympics. So this is a theme now, this anarchism as a threat of terrorism. So... You know, when people start to figure out that the whole left-right uh, parties usually don't work and that system doesn't work, then, uh, you know, they have to demonize it, right? It has to be demonized. That's why, you know, this whole there's this whole stigma around, so, you know, A, you know, anarchy. It's just, these are the same people that, you know, they throw mol Molotov cocktails, you know? And that's not the majority of them. You know, I keep saying that, too. It's not the majority of them. Most of them are peaceful people. But this whole thing to associate the anarchy with violence is just... They, it, it, it's a it's a long term um, neutralizing of, of an idea or a concept that could actually help set humanity free on this planet. But yeah, you can see that it's not just for the quote terrorist threat in Italy or in uh, the Olympic or at the Olympics, but also because of the actual collapse of the euro. I mean, they're coming out and saying that. And if you know about all the stuff that's been passed, all the bills. Not like they really need bills to do any of it, but they just do it for public consumption uh, that have passed in the United States. It's horrendous, and, and, and we are already over here in the United States to be uh, totally neutralized and taken over. So it says here, anarchist group vows to wage low-level warfare on Olympics, so the group uh, vows to sabotage financial uh, institutions, transport, and the military in the lead-up to the London Olympic. But whether it's, you know, the government provocateuring or actual tool bag anarchists that call themselves anarchists, they actually play into the hands because then they, they, they embolden and strengthen and enrichen the state by carrying out acts of violence and sabotaging. The United States continuing to overspend on police despite decreasing crime rates. It says here, lowest levels. Congress who spend more on tanks than U.S. military even wants. 
Panetta says spending cuts would be disastrous to national defense. We want more, more. One trillion dollars is not enough for the national security budget, according to him. So this is GGN. Thank